We're actually at the Human Engineering Research Lab. It's a collaboration from, with the VA uh -huh. and the University of Pittsburgh and the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. The VA research and the university are working together to invent the next generation of assistive technologies. That's great. That's really great. Yeah, so it's kind of a good marriage. So we're going to first take you up to the Karen system. Okay. It's computerized re-engineering rehab capability. It's a 3D virtual reality room that allows us to test subjects in a number of environments that you can't duplicate on the ground. Far out. We do wheelchair studies as well as gate biomechanics based studies here and also control systems. So you so can actually also change the change, angle pitch right. yaw. In, in, wow. in all different angles up to about We've set it up to about 28 degrees in any angle. So any you can minute. build a whole course on this. We can build a whole course on this. all right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. So what we do is put markers and have, put it on different slopes and ramps and see right. what happens to your shoulder biomechanics. Oh, so, wow. So right. you're watching the musculature and uh -huh. helping to redesign these? But, and Two, but both. Redesign right. the chair as well as inform people what good propulsion techniques are when they're going up the ramp. Right, so because for them, this is the only chance of good mobility, so we don't want to injure the shoulder up ahead. So it's not just training, it's, it's not just uh, study, it's also it's training. It's training. Yeah. Yeah. And then these are your motion dots on yep. your arm. Yep. I can see yep. you're not a cyborg. So That's actually 10, going to... Yep. And so yeah. there's cameras up so there. So those red dots up there. And then the last part of this puzzle is on the side of, on this wheel. Yeah. Here. This wheel is actually instrumented. Right. So it's called the smart wheel. And so... What it does is it collects the forces and moments that are put on the wheel when you're propelling. Oh. So basically, we can look at what forces and moments are being put there on the wheel. Right. So we can use that so, with the motion to get the joint forces. And there, are, I'm guessing once you did that, you were able to see huge efficiencies from small changes in yep. the operator's yep. exactly. behavior. Yeah. Yes. So things that have led to better innovation are better hand grips. Right. Um, that's one thing. In that's terms come of up. their width, their right. distance, yep. their and the material that they have. Sure. Um, as opposed to regular tubular hand grips, they have wider grips with rubber and so forth. So that's proven to be efficient. Um, the advantage of having force plates on here as opposed to on the floor is yeah. so with wheelchair we don't get much of a distribution and change, but here you're studying directly what happens in the shoulder. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a bigger advantage. That's thrilling. It's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Really it sounds cool. like really fun work. Yeah. yeah so that's, it is. A, that's in manual chairs. We also connect the entire system to joysticks, and the whole system becomes a power wheelchair driving simulator. Then we can have people navigate different environments, we can study their navigational choices and challenges and so forth. Oh my goodness. This is really awesome. And okay. now Sarah is controlling the face of the treadmill. And you can see the changes in the forces here as well with every propulsion. People also use it for prosthetic um, training. When, when you're getting a new prosthetic limb, oh, so you can develop applications. Walk on that. Yeah, right. walk on I that. See. And you can have people control things on screen in response to your forces. So rather than having you do physical therapy-based exercises in a clinic, walking right, up right. steps, now you're engaging them in an environment where you can change things dynamically. I, I'm so sad that we have to move on. But thank you so <laughs> sure. much for thank showing you. this Thanks amazing program. Thank so you. nice to I meet really you. I really appreciate it. Sure. This is called the new chair, or also known as the air chair. It gets its power not from batteries, which can be problematic, but through air. Just compressed air. Compressed air. The other thing is it takes a, a while for batteries to recharge. Well, this can charge in a minute. You right. can refill those tanks and it's up and run it again. And you guys are building these prototypes here? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah, we have a complete machine shop down in the basement. It's pretty extensive and we're, we're pretty happy to work down there. It's pretty yeah. awesome. So. so this is called the uh, queuing kitchen. This is the allows, gives verbal and visual cues to individuals with cognitive impairments or the natural aging process yeah. that allows them to be able to function independently at home in the kitchen. Because as, as we know, uh, the minute you aren't able to cook for yourself, somebody's looking for, to, uh, uh, for alternatives. Right. But if we can keep the individuals to, uh, with disabilities or cognitive impairments or just a natural aging process uh, to be able to function at, independently at home, uh, the better off everyone is. You ready to cook some pasta? Absolutely. All right, step on in the kitchen. We're okay. going to guide you through it. Take a cooking pot from the lighted cabinet. Ah, oh, it knows where it is. Take out pasta from the transparent cabinet. Oh, so 
Oh, nice. LCD. Okay, I gotcha. Fill the cooking pot with water from the water faucet. So, one of the cool things is we actually have a faucet sensor. So, if you leave the water, yeah. give it a minute. Well, you forget how to do that. Right. Keeps going. It turns off automatically. That's you don't have to worry about overuse of water. Wow. So. And all this is feedback, so it knows that you've taken it out of the cabinet. It knows where. Yes. We have four different sensors. We have appliance sensors on the fridge, stove, and the oven. Uh, we have the faucet sensor. We have cabinet sensors that can tell when you open which cabinet. Mm -hmm. And we also have the handle sensors that light up. Right, right, okay. Yes. Um, all of these are designed to help you get through the kitchen. You can actually program where you want all the different items. And this is also a place where you're doing motion studies with people with disabilities to see how they interact with the space and so find the limitations. So we have our connect sensor up at the top. All right. Of course there's security issues with that, but it's only giving like a 3D type figure. It doesn't show faces or anything mm -hmm. and we can track their movement within the kitchen. We can tell them, okay, you're too far over to the to the sink, we need you to move a little closer to the stove. Oh, so that sensor can actually speak to the central system and help you yes. goose you here and there. Yes. Wow. That's really cool. Yes. We have a try to on this uh, Richard Monty Robotic Farms, uh, especially we focus on the interface, user interface of the, uh, the robotic farm, and we do some evaluation uh, for clinical evidences uh, so the original interface are right here, either using a keypad or mm -hmm. using a joystick. Sure. But uh, we develop a, a phone app just to have that easier for to learn and easier for controlling. Oh. So yeah, take the seat and May try I? it out. Oh. See if you uh -huh. can bring yourself a cup of soda can. Oh wow. That is so freaking cool, dude. Okay, find Sarah Connor. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi. A nice pleasure. To nice to meet you. Um, so this is a bed scale that I've been working on. So if you think of wheelchair users, they can't really stand on a bathroom scale. Um, so a lot of them go years without knowing their weight, even if they go to the doctor's office because of the time it takes for them to drive on a, a roll-on scale and then they have to get out of the chair and somebody else goes over and weighs the chair and so it's pretty complicated. So right. um, it's really hard for wheelchair users to maintain their weight at home. Um, and uh, especially with like, you know, Fitbits or trying to lose weight, you kind of need the feedback to know like, oh, you're losing weight or you're, you're not losing weight or anything. So this was our first prototype of that. Um, so it's basically just four sensors that would go into the legs of a bed and we have a bedside display there. Um, that just uh, shows you what your weight would be every time you get in or get out of bed. Wow. Um, the new version is all wireless and it sends it directly to the cloud so you can look at an app on your phone that shows what your weight has been. Um, and the nice thing is it's passive so you don't even have to think like, oh, I should go weigh myself. You can just bring it up and say, oh, what if I weighed over the last month? Right, um, right, right. And then we're also looking at some clinical applications where um, we can use it as a bed alarm if somebody's getting out of bed in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. um, we can monitor sleep quality because we can tell if the person's moving around in the bed. Um, and also with movement, we can monitor risk for pressure sores if they've been in one position for a long time and haven't moved. Oh, that's what um, we love. So, An ancillary benefits of, mm -hmm. yeah, of yeah, the Yeah, we, we just thought of a scale at first and then we've started looking at all these other applications that we could use for it. That is really awesome. And so you guys are just here all day dreaming this stuff up. Pretty much. A, a lot of it comes from family members or us or, you know, talking to people in the community that, oh, I wish I had something that could do this. This actually came from uh, my advisor's um, stepfather uh, is a wheelchair user and pretty significantly overweight. Um, and my advisor just said, well, when was the last time you got weight? And he's like, I don't know, a couple years. So he was like, hmm, we should look into why that happened. That's you know, really and awesome. so it. You know, it comes up from conversations or talking to people in the community or yeah. you know, anything, and then we try to solve that problem. That's great. It's also great that you seem to have a real soup to nuts facility where 
it's not like you come up with something and then six weeks later you get it back from a shop. No, we can build it here. All you that, that, like right that self-leveling robotic uh, base to that power wheelchair that you yeah. saw, that was all built downstairs. It's really great. So what do you know about uh, prosthetic limbs? I know a bunch of things about prosthetic limbs. I know that uh, the interface between the limb and its user is a very difficult area. Perfect. Perfect starting point. So having the union between the prosthetic limb and the person, as you said, is really important. That's what my research is all about. Stuff, I got a dog toy here. Right. And I used plaster to kind of make a mold of this. Sure, sure. By just inverting it like that. Mm -hmm. And I used that to make my first prototype. Basically what it is, it's a prosthetic limb liner, which prevents the excessive buildup of moisture. I use this as like a mold to right. cast a perforated liner. These modern liners, they stay attached by a suction cup mechanism, you know? So if you have perforations, it's a no-go. It falls off your leg. So what we've done is we've developed a biocompatible membrane, which allows water to pass through it. And it feels and acts like rubber, but it's actually 90% water. Now this is just regular silicone. Okay. But over here I have a sample that you can test yeah. out. So these three samples, these are silicone. Yeah. And then this is our special material. It's 90% water and wow. it behaves a lot like rubber. It does. So we've taken our proof of concept with yeah. the plaster and we've upgraded to using 3D printing. Wow. So I used this small proof of concept. Now I printed out the big ones. <laughs> and this is all done in here. This is just. Yeah, right here in this workshop. Have you been able to try it out on an actual user? No, but that's planned. We that's have uh, we have that in the works. Okay. So as soon as we have our second generation prototype going, that's what first thing we're going to do. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank showing you. this to me. Yeah. Really cool. We can prototype PCBs for any of our robotics designs. Right. All of the PCBs that were in the, the power wheelchair that climbed stairs, mm -hmm. uh, any of the other uh, kitchen bot stuff upstairs. Wow. Um, that was all designed and built down here. And we do this with the aid of our students. A lot of the goal here is to make sure that our students get experience and exposure to these machines, to the knowledge that our engineers bring to the table, and learn how to produce and fabricate their own designs. Uh, as much as we can get them to do their own project work, uh, we're confident that they'll go out into industry with extra skills that other people don't have and yeah. a more intimate understanding of what exactly they're producing and, and how that and how gets, gets produced. Made. Yeah, Our test lab, we do a variety of different power wheelchair, manual wheelchair, and scooter testing. Um, so we oh, use oh. the double drums to test all sorts of chairs through ANSI Resna, which is the American-based standards for, for wheelchairs and for rehabilitation devices, as well as ISO standards testing for, uh, sometimes it's for manufacturers and we're uh, an unbiased third party to try and help make sure that we're confirming everything that they claim is true about their their chairs right as as well as doing testing for brand new prototypes to make sure that they're safe to put into a research study but what you hear right now are curb slats right those are supposed to help simulate the yeah. life of the chair so that we're really wearing them out um, and we test all the way to failure uh, so we we have standards that we follow but then we test them further to see where they fail at Wow. Um, and so after 200,000 cycles on the double drum machines, we have a curb drop that drops them six inches every couple seconds, and that really puts them through their paces. This is amazing. So many toys. Yeah. And it's like you're doing different stuff down here every day. Yeah, I don't think there's ever going to be another job that's this rewarding yeah. for everything that we get to do. It's just, that's so awesome. Thank you so much for showing me. Thank you so much. Well, I could spend hours. In fact, I think I could spend days in this place. You guys look like you're having tremendous amounts of fun <laughs> and doing really good work all at the same time. And it seems like it's different every single day for everybody. Yeah, it really is. Uh, we've got a great staff here that uh, are dedicated to the work, improving the lives of people with disabilities and the elderly. And uh, like, you, like I mentioned earlier, every day is an adventure here, and they come up with new ideas and new, adventure, uh, new, new ways of uh, people coming up with assistive technologies and for the next generation. It's really neat. Uh, I wish I could stay job. and play. Thank you yeah. so much for showing me your wonderful toy box here. Yeah, this is fun. Thank, Thank you for coming. We appreciate you having you. Absolutely.